People are so interested in the history of this building, what's happened here, um, what it meant to Chicago when it was built. What my favorite part of this building is, is the people aspect. So I have memories of the people coming through the doors and coming through the stage door to perform, and there's thousands of those memories. I'm Ed Weil. My great-grandfather was Dankmar Adler. He was the architect engineer for building the theater in 1889. My history starts with the theater starts in 1944 when I was in the Navy and this was not the auditorium theater then it was the USO and they had six bowling alleys from the stage out and I bowled here in 1944. The theater is a monument to the great builders of Chicago. Very proud of the theater's heritage and my family's part in it. I just got to love it, and I, I, was, I made the auditorium my home. We had a lot of rock shows asking to come in. All the rock shows who started out, started out from the auditorium, and then they got bigger and bigger. They were big bands. I mean, there was like major talent. I remember it was $5, $4, $3, and $2. Derek and the Dominoes, The Who, performing Tommy. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Their first show before Woodstock was, was on that stage. We saw Neil Young, Don McLean, Pink Floyd, King Crimson, Slade, Joni Mitchell. The first pictures that I ever took in my life were of Rod Stewart at the Auditorium Theater. They started getting me into concerts, and one of them was this guy I'd never heard of. His name was Bruce Springsteen. I sat there all night long taking pictures, and one of the most famous pictures I ever took was of Bruce with Clarence Clemens right behind him. In here, the, the, it, all of a sudden, it, it became kind of an art form, I think. It ennobled rock and roll. Well, I often think about how, how many historic figures have probably stepped out onto that stage, how many great artists and performers who had such impact on the field and on the world. And so when I step out there, I sort of feel that I'm standing on shoulders. Once I started coming here, I realized that this was a place that always brought really great companies and really great dance. This was the only place that I had seen companies from other countries. I saw the Bolshoi, I think. I saw Ailey here for the first time, the Joffrey. So this was kind of like my home for dance inspiration. The Joffrey has been this has been our home for the last 18 years. The sense you get is of family. I sometimes have to pinch myself like, wow, Renee Robinson danced on this stage, or Judith Jameson danced on this stage, or even Alvin Ailey, like this is where he came. It just feels good to know now, growing up, I was once here in the audience, and then now actually being on stage, it's like, wow. Like some dreams come true, basically. I remember walking out onto the stage and just looking at this mammoth auditorium with all of these seats and these incredible lights. I mean, it's, it's like no other theater in the world. Really for me, is, is the kind spirit that I get every time I'm here. The Auditorium Theater is like a, it's like a good friend. You know, always welcome you home with open arms. And of course, the Nutcracker every year is really important to us. And it really is a wonderful venue for all the kids that are in the Nutcracker. I'm looking forward to most about being in the Nutcracker this year is that I'm going to be performing in front of a lot of fans. And I think that for a lot of those kids, it's the first time performing with the Joffrey or coming to a theater like the Auditorium. And for them, it's just a, a magical experience. I'm Maggie Shally, and I participated in the Too Out to Handle Poetry Contest and I got to perform my poem on stage. One of the greatest things about my job when I arrived is that the slate was really pretty clean for me to think about programs. And that was especially true in the education area. So a program like Hands Together Heart to Art would never have happened if I didn't have that opportunity to really brainstorm and, and dream about what we wanted it to be. If I had to describe the auditorium theater in one word, it would be beautiful. It's a classic building. And when they remodeled it and redid it, they, they put it back into the original condition. On September 29th, 2013, we got engaged at the Auditorium Theater. <laughs> I'm up here on the stage all by myself, and I see this cloaked and masked figure coming towards me. He handed me an envelope that said, Open Now. And then he was in front of me, and then when I opened it, it said, Will you marry me on it? I also wanted to do it somewhere that would be where 
part of our personal history would kind of intersect with a place like this that has such a rich history of its own. And I think you, f you feel the, the majestic architecture of this, of this theater. You know, I guess my favorite, favorite part of the building would be sitting right down there and looking up at the ceiling. I would describe the auditorium theater as boisterous because the setting is very fun and lively. I think that the auditorium theater shows the country and the world that we value the performing arts. And I know the dancers love performing here. They love being in this, this awesome theater because you can, you can sort of feel you know, the history. Well, you're really excited that because you get to add your, your part of, to the history of, of the stage. And so it's pretty amazing to, to know that I was able to be here as well. We, we live, live the, the history. history. We live the history. We live the history. We live. We live. We live the history. We live the history. Happy 125th birthday, Auditorium Theater. Happy 125th birthday. Happy 125th, Auditorium Theater. We wish the Auditorium the happiest 125th anniversary. But those people are really my fondest memory of this, of this building because a building is beautiful and it's wonderful and, and the history and what's happened is great. But it's about the people that come through and come back and they're the people that make it relevant today. They're the people who make it alive today. They're the people who in, are ensuring that it's going to be around for another 125 years.